Come on, dear. Falter of a stock at the Radio Maria era. Nice to have your company. A wave to everybody here on uh, YouTube and Facebook as well. Uh, Joe, look at the time there. It's a little bit after 20 past. Way late, as does happen from time to time, as you know, here on the radio. Get uh, caught up in stuck in stuff that's going on and organising things in meetings and so forth. So, uh, just a little bit late starting today. So, thanks for your company. Thanks for being with me here. And as always, lovely to be able to chat with you and talk over faith matters and indeed matters moral moral questions too so as always i do love to hear from you oh eight nine four six seven two thousand is that text and whatsapp number and oh one four one two three four five six is the uh telephone number to give a call as well as usual plus three five three in front of those if you're ringing from the north of ireland or from further field and uh, drop the zero plus three five three one four one two three four five six is the telephone number you give mary a shout there or uh, plus three five three eight nine four six seven two thousand to whatsapp and text us from anywhere on the planet we'd be happy to hear from you email of course info at radiomaria.ie drop a like comment share follow subscribe as always on our social media would be glad indeed to hear from you. Lovely trip out yesterday and uh, one or two pictures I think on up on our Facebook page there where we visited churches around Dublin City. It was really nice to get to visit uh, the tomb if you like or actually if the coffin is above ground it's not even a tomb it's the resting place of uh, Venerable Matt Talbot there in Our Lady of Lourdes Church there in Sean McDermott Street Shrine of Venerable Matt Talbot and of course he a patron saint uh, for recovery from addiction having himself grown up in a family of alcoholics and himself become addicted to alcohol and heroically then overcoming that uh, addiction through prayer and through his consecration to Jesus through Mary. So thanks to Victor there, the local sacristan. He's just started in the church there lately. Met Anne as well, another sacristan there too, with Father Michael, the parish priest. Got a very kindly welcome. Uh, it was lovely to go there and met some of the parishioners, of course, too. And Victor very kindly put out for us the relics of um, Venerable Matt Talbot, the beautiful cross, crucifix that he venerated so much. And one of the chains that he used to wear, quite a formidable chain, would have been a painful thing, I'd say, to wear. And it's one of the recommendations of St. Louis-Marie de Montfort, not, um, well, I suppose as, as, as a twofold thing, as a gesture of penance, bodily penance on the one hand, but also a, a sense of um, commitment to her, or dedication to her, consecration to Our Lady, that the chain kind of binds and links us then. And what's recommended now is not so much the penitential end of, of wearing a heavy chain around us physically, um, if you remember, the children of Fatima were encouraged to wear a rope around their waist and, and Our Lady admonished them a little for overdoing it with it. It's one of the risky propositions that if a person is taking on that kind of physical mortification, it's far better to get advice, good sound spiritual advice in relation to that, because physical mortification can sometimes be um, misdirected or misunderstood as a kind of self-aggrandizement or uh, spiritual pride can uh, kick in saying, look, aren't I great? Look at all the mortifications I'm doing, how wonderful I am. Um, and it's the very opposite then of what it's intended to do, which is to discipline the body in order to allow the spirit, the spiritual life to grow. And there's plenty of room on a Friday for physical mortification in the way of abstaining from food in uh, perhaps taking on an extra act of kindness or charitable work of attending to our spiritual duties with a little more fervor <clears throat> plenty of room there without having to wear heavy chains and that uh, those burdened with with heavy addictions are difficult um you know they, they, they're just so tied up maybe that maybe there's a need and room there for um stronger mortification let's say and very often the, the mortification that's the toughest of all is to abstain from the source of addiction altogether and it would mean and necessitate invariably supplanting that with something otherwise noble and worthy and good and so those who break free or manage to get on the path of freedom from addiction <clears throat> will um, 
inevitably need to fill that space or that void left by abst abstinence with something much more wholesome. And that would certainly include a good faith life, a sacramental life and a prayer life such as Matt Talbot undertook. And as we know, he uh, walked the long way home and no doubt made it his practice to visit churches instead of visiting pubs on his way home. And again, died at a relatively, well, let's see now, I thought, was he, was he, um, let me think of the dates, was it 19, 1856 to 1925? So 70 years of age, yes, yeah, I mean, he would have. So how many years of sobriety he had? I'm not sure. I, I should have made some notes there when Dermot was sharing us his thoughts uh, with us uh, and his story with us. But there's so little left of um, Venerable Matt Talbot that he actually he had nothing. He gave everything away. Was the term was telling us the story of the lady who um, did, was she she was very very poor, but she managed to survive. But when Matt Talbot died, uh, all of a sudden she was back to destitution again, and it transpired that Matt would give her a shilling out of his wages every week to help pay her rent or buy a loaf of bread or whatever to, to sustain her a little bit in her need. So from what he earned, he was, he, you know, he, he gave it all away. There was nothing left <laughs> in the end. Um, Matt really intensely followed the gospel. At any rate, that's a story worth uh, telling again and in fuller detail and, and sharing with you. There's one or two very good books. Um, is there a writer? Purcell, I think is her name wrote an early biography of Matt Talbot. That's one of the better books, certainly, that I've read on him. And uh, something we should feature again and, and put up for you as a podcast and recording, the lives of these great Irish uh, witnesses to faith. So we'll see to that. We'll, we'll put that. It's great to visit his shrine. Great to pray there. And Father Michael again was so the parish priest, so very welcoming. He said they commemorate his feast day on Trinity Sunday. And uh, there was another day in the year as well, I think, set aside Temperance Sunday it was, yeah. So, um, of course, that clashes then with the Sunday, maybe, um, what's the word, sort of sort of lessens the impact maybe of the of the, um, the feast if it was a separate, its own day, let's say, might be a better option. At any rate, um, something we'll return to and a great treasure to have. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get to the other churches with everyone else as well. So I missed out on the trip to Gardner Street and Blessed John Sullivan and the Shrine of St. Valentine and Whitefriars Street too, and the other beautiful churches, Pro Cathedral and uh, Clarendon Street. But thanks to all who came. There was about 20, I'd say, turned up uh, all together. And uh, many of those, they come from far and wide. There was um, a couple who came down from Antrim in the north. There was we had a couple of listeners from Meath came across, a uh, man too uh, from Tipperary, and a man from Mayo. So we had kind of north, south, east and west represented. It was quite appropriate. And it was lovely to meet uh, our dear listeners and friends indeed, and to, to get to know you. And so uh, thank you for coming, those who did, and thank you for those who shared with us, um, as you did, I suppose, remotely too. So uh, Dave will come on again. I'm sure you'll hear more about that trip. There'll be a few little more bits and pieces put up online as well to share with you the blessings of that trip. And Dermot will probably talk about it in his programme too. So now we have our, our minds fixed on what we, where we might go next. So we're open to suggestions if you want to suggest where we might go for our next mini pilgrimage. And there's lots of lovely religious uh, sites around the country uh, that we have in mind. Cashel was one that was mentioned, Clon Mac Noise, um, there's bound to be holy wells or sites of saints or, again, places of renown in Ireland associated with our faith that we'll gladly put on our list of places to go. Just chatting with Dave last night as well. I would certainly be glad to host and maybe November might be the time to do it. Um, a little walking tour, maybe not a walking tour, I'm not sure, of the sites associated with Frank Duff and the Legion of Mary. So his birthplace in Drumcondra. Uh, the house where he lived with his mother and sister, Frank Duff House and the Legion headquarters, the two hostels which he founded for the homeless, the Regina Celli and the Morning Star. They'd be glad for us to pop in and pay a little visit and see what they do. And then maybe visit down to Myra Street, uh, or, sorry, Myra House in Francis Street, where it all started, and maybe a tour of the house there. They have a little display on there as well. And a visit to Frank Duff's grave then in Glasnevin. So 
Uh, just a thought, just a thought. It's not firmed up. It's not fixed in any way at the moment, but an idea. So if you have ideas again, please let us know. There are a plethora of places all around the country we know worthy of a visit and a little mini pilgrimage. Gugan Barra, lovely, lovely place in West Cork, comes to mind straight away. Our Ladies Island down in, is that Wexford? Again, a must, I'm sure, that we, we must add to our list. Again, the uh, the, the Pilgrim Way of, of St. Patrick uh, above in uh, Antrim again. Uh, Down Patrick, we were there, of course, not that long ago, but it's well worthy of, of uh, consideration. Uh, who knows where else? Ross now, I'm thinking up the northwest of the country and uh, Donegal is surely a plethora of places there as well. So listen, please do uh, let us know where we might go next and uh, we'll keep adding to our list of little mini pilgrimages as best we can. Don't forget, we're climbing the reek on this Sunday coming, uh, as in I will be climbing the reek, and I'm sure there'll be others of you joining us as well. Uh, we know we've had a few messages in to us. Uh, we know there'll be uh, other um, listeners and followers and, and friends of Radio Maria will be along. I know the Legion of Mary will be along in force as well, and they'll be doing a little bit of contact work at the foot of the mountain as we hope to do ourselves to be present as Radio Maria to uh, share with you some of our literature and encourage listenership, of course, of uh, Radio Maria. Just to encourage you, do you know the way the cyclists says they're in the Tour de France and they have people clapping and encouraging them as they pass by? Uh, we'd like to consider to be doing the same, really, encouraging people as they climb the mountain and head up at Croke Patrick. So please, God, I'll be setting off. I don't know what time it takes to start to get for a nine o'clock mass at the top of the mountain. I suppose seven in the morning on Sunday morning and climbing Croke Patrick. And I do hope to spend some time at the summit hearing confessions as well. So I'll be wearing my Radio Maria colours. So you'll spot me if you're anywhere in the vicinity. Come on over, say hello and uh, be glad to meet you. And we, as we did indeed on our tour and at the Shrine of um, Venerable Matt uh, Talbot yesterday brought your prayers and your intentions and especially those burdened with addiction uh, before the Lord. And as we climb Crow Patrick in a penitential way again, bringing all of your prayers and your intentions. And those of you, I'm sure, again, like that, who would love to come with us on these pilgrimages, the mini pilgrimages around the country, but cannot for whatever reason, but join us virtually, as it were, or join us on the radio. Uh, the very same we bear with you our dear listeners and friends as we climb Crow Patrick as well. And I'm just hopeful that these will become um, regular um, events that we'll, we'll have it simply as part of our calendar on Radio Maria. Uh, Loch Dorg, of course, is another place of pilgrimage that, again, needs to be put on our Radio Maria calendar, as, of course, Knock. And please, God, we'll be heading for the Knock Novena. Uh, we got permission to put a little stand there and meet and greet you in St. John's Centre in Knock in the course of the Novena. So watch out for us there. We'll certainly be along there as well. That's the uh, nine days up to the 22nd of August, I think, is it? The 11th, 12th of August uh, ish to the 22nd, with, of course, the Feast Day of the Assumption as part of that. So I hope to be there myself for a few days towards the end of that, um, uh, that Novena in Knock. And you'll be able to meet me there in Knock, please God. That's the plan at this stage. As indeed uh, the plan is to attend and be present at the Youth Conference, the Youth 2000 Conference in Clongo's Wood from the 11th to the 14th of August. So a little bit of overlap between the two events there. We'll do our best to bilocate and, and be there. So again, we do look forward to meeting and greeting you, whether it's up the reek, whether it's at Youth 2000, uh, in Clongo's Wood or whether it's uh, in Knock for the Novena uh, give us a shout out say hello come on over and say hello we'll be glad to connect with you as part of our radio family and this is the exercise at hand um, really to encourage you in your faith embolden you and say look we're here with you we're journeying with you we're supporting you in your faith we're at your side, we're at the, the turn of a dial, we're on your, your smartphone, we're, we're on um, Serve Your Channel 210. We're with you, we're praying with you, we're praying for you, we're accompanying you. Keep going, arrive, live, bear bua, <laughs> all those lovely Irish expressions, keep, keep motoring on. And uh, as I say, we accompany you. So it's as much uh, fellowship with you as support for you as our, our Radio Maria family 
as indeed it is promotion and encouraging others to join our little crew. Martha, Mary and Lazarus today, a little crew there as well, a family that Jesus loved very much, whose home he visited and in the very same way accompanied them in faith and challenged and nurtured them to come onwards in their faith too. So we had the two episodes, of course, with Martha. I keep hitting this little thing here. hope it's not making too much noise. Um, we had Martha and Mary and Lazarus. So Martha's journey is very significant there in sacred scripture. As you know, she, Jesus came to the house and Martha was distracted with the serving. Tell my sister to help me. It was all about her and she failed to recognize whom she was serving and how much that would have transformed her role of service when she considered the person whom she was serving. And I feel a little bit like that with, with our Radio Maria mission and apostolate, that our focus is on you. We're, we're serving you. We don't want to be distracted so much with the serving, <laughs> but uh, bring Jesus and Mary to you. And so it's not about the person serving. So it's not about us. And I, I just that's what keeps me here in Radio Maria. It has nothing to do with celebrity status or any of that nonsense, any of that superficiality. We have been given a gift of faith. We want to share it and, and bring the blessing of the faith to you. We are just the instruments. You know, there was a priest before me, Father Eamon Monson, temporarily. There was a priest before him, Father Michael Ross. Good old Father Michael got it all going. There'll be a priest after me. There'll be somebody else who'll come on in. There's lots of wonderful priests already coming to the microphone here. And I'm quite happy I must decrease and let them increase. No bother. It's it's not about, you know, you need to kind of have a personality. It's just part of it, but it's not something that's central in any way. It helps, I suppose, to have some of the charisms and gifts that are necessary for broadcasting. But what of it? Let them be used like Mother Teresa as God's pencil uh, in, in the service of the mission, which is to bring Jesus to souls to you and to accompany you as Our Lady and Mary and Martha, no doubt, the holy women would have accompanied Jesus on his missionary journey, on his preaching and his, um, you know, his, his, his path, three year mission of evangelization, you know, bringing, bringing the message that you're welcome or unwelcome and, and bring it to people. This is our task. It's so similar. And again, Martha, Mary and Lazarus, the fellowship of siblings and opening their home to the Lord. We've experienced that so often um, from so many wonderful people. A uh, big shout out and a big thank you to Anne Chambers. She's welcoming us to Westport again at the weekend and opening her home so very kindly. Herself and her husband are very grateful indeed and very gracious. And uh, again, it, it's an answer to the gospel that uh, the apostles who left everything, you know, we've left houses, sister, father, motherland, all that stuff. What's in it for us? Well, houses, brothers, sisters, land, you know, hundredfold and in the life to come. So we've found that everywhere we've gone, where we received this kindly welcome, the gospel welcome. It's been very beautiful and very, very fruitful uh, indeed as well. And I hope indeed bringing blessings l like that to all our dear benefactors and friends and all who assist us the very same. So Martha, Mary and Lazarus, again, what a wonderful family. And no doubt, not without their sibling rivalries or sibling um, confrontation. What's the word? S differences that happens in all families, kind of tension between siblings are a bit too close at times and uh, better off to keep a bit of distance, <laughs> maybe. And yet you can have very close siblings as well who don't rub each other up the wrong way and get on flying all the time. That happens too. So here's Martha. Please tell Mary to help me, you know. Um, come on, get up off your haunches there. So we can sympathize with Martha, but we learn from it through Jesus what matters. Few things matter. We worry, we fret about so many things. What will we put on the table? What will we wear? Where will we live? How will we pay the bills? <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's one of our big worries here at the moment. Man, the cost of living is just, we were all steamrollered by this is really, really difficult. What are we going to do? How are we going to make ends meet? How are we going to manage? Gosh, uh, just amazing. Um, and it's a real, real concern. 
but we mustn't worry and fret too much about it. We must apply ourselves, I suppose, to the needs at hand and the concerns at hand, yes, but few things matter in the end, indeed only one. It is the Lord that matters. Isn't that a lovely teaching? This beautiful feast of St. Martha and Mary and Lazarus really helps us understand uh, very personally and very closely the Lord's mission and, and what ultimately matters. Now, I do want to hear from you. We did get a couple of texts coming in. I've got to pause for a little piece of music. How's my time there? About 22. Uh, just trying to divide the show a little bit uh, more evenly. So if I can go to a piece of music, indeed, I shall do so now. Again, I'd encourage you to get in touch and uh, email info at radiomaria.ie. Please do text and WhatsApp 089-467-2000. And likewise, uh, please give us a call on 014 one two three four five six so i'm not spotting anyone there at the mixing desk for me so i won't be able to go to a piece of music if there's nobody on hand obviously something is afoot or something is i see there's work going on in the production studio next door george is recording his show so in which case what i shall do uh, uh, unable to make a pause without uh, my assistance here i'll just have a text message that, that did ca come in yesterday that i want to um to share with you. Nice to get those lovely words of thanks uh, for the Holy Mass that we've been celebrating and, and uh, yesterday's Mass from um, um, from John McDermott Street. Uh, so that's certainly good to know. Um, uh, very good. And is sending a message there. She says she has some good news. We always like to be the recipients of good news. Well done. Where is it gone? We had a request from a listener. Here it is. Here it is. A uh, listener rang in and uh, uh, again, in the absence of a piece of music, we'll come to our break shortly. A listener rang in this morning. Uh, my message tells me here um, there was a programme about indulgences yesterday. Now, I wonder what show that was. Um, I'm not sure. It might have been a repeat programme, maybe two. And uh, thought that the speaker should have mentioned the indulgence of the 1st of August of the Portiuncula indulgence um, that's coming up actually that's not that coming up on Monday it is there the Feast of Portiuncula and just uh, um, maybe want to a little bit know a bit more about in indulgences and the idea again of God's grace to um, again accompanied by a good work or a good action by prayer especially prayer for the Holy Father's intentions by uh, receiving a Holy Communion on the Indulgence Day and um, by getting to confession within the octave, so plus or minus a week of the, the day that the indulgence is granted. And an indulgence then can be partial or plenary. Now, indulgence simply means really drawing from the treasury of Christ's salvific suffering, death and resurrection that is at, excuse me, at the church's disposal yeah. and uh, allowing us then to apply that indulgence to ourselves or to others. So it's a free gift on behalf of the church. And I suspect that because of our own imperfection and our own human limitations, we fail to complete uh, perfectly um, indulgence requirements are, you know, we, we probably do fall short to some extent uh, each time. But nonetheless, the church speaks speaks of a plenary indulgence, a full indulgence in relation to that which uh, allows us to uh, avail of complete forgiveness of all punishment due to sin. And a partial indulgence then is one where we get a partial remittance of punishment due. Now, I see Shane is uh, kind of coming to the mixing desk there. I'm going to come back to that. And again, if you want to get in touch with me and, and just explore that conversation a little bit with me, uh, please do as well. Um, and I'll continue and just finish on that segment there on indulgences. We're going to take a small little music break. It just allows me a, a little soft subiog to clear my throat. Uh, and again, please get in touch. Drop a, a question, a comment, a like, a share, a follow on our social media as well. So thanks, Shane. We'll play a little piece of music and back very shortly.
bless the Lord, oh my soul. A little musical interview for you today. Thanks for that, Shane. And welcome back. It's Chad to Kieses, of course. And if you're new to Radio Maria, my name is Father Eamon McCarthy. And uh, wasn't ignoring you there on the on the camera. Just catch up my phone. Here's the <laughs> usual pose, isn't it? When you have the head down and you can't even see the person's face. It's really bad manners <laughs> to be gazing at your phone when you're in company. Not not good. Uh, we were just touching on the whole question of indulgences and the Feast of the Port Junkula. Thank you, Ulrika. Correcting me there. It's the 2nd of August is the Feast Day of the Port Junkula and uh, your wedding anniversary. So congratulations, uh, Ulrika and Michael, on your wedding anniversary this coming Tuesday. And uh, the um, Port Junkula is a little chapel in St. Mary of the Angels uh, there uh, in um, Rome, a small Catholic church within the Papal Basilica of St. Mary of the Angels, small little uh, building there, and um, which is um, about four kilometers away from Assisi, and the place from where, of course, the Franciscans began with St. Francis, naturally, too. And the, the Franciscans continue to celebrate the Feast of Our Lady of the Angels on the 2nd of August, which marks the feast day of the dedication of the church there. The indulgence can, could only at first be gained uh, in the Porciuncula Chapel uh, between the afternoon of 1st of August and sunset on the 2nd, but it was extended to all churches uh, of the 1st and 2nd orders of St. Francis for Franciscans back uh, under Pope Sixtus uh, IV and then uh, Gregory the Fifteenth extended it to all the faithful who after confession, receiving Holy Communion, visited such churches on the appointed day. So there's the uh, the activity in question, visiting the church. And again, if you see, if you're, if you're a person who goes to daily Mass, even if you do it, I would say, remotely, you know, that you're sick or you're, you're in some way not able to get to Mass, if you're doing it online, you can avail of all of these things. This church makes generous allowances for these things, if for one reason or another that you're not able to do the physical dimension of the indulgence uh, activity uh, so you can do it in spirit so to speak and certainly with all the online stuff we have now sure it is a piece of cake to, to be able to join in online it's not quite the same of course when you can't be there it's like visiting the shrine of venerable matt talbot it it means so much to actually be there and to go up and touch the, the glass um, window there where his coffin is you know and to see the relics as well it does make make that little difference, all right. Um, let me see now. There's a lot of text here that I can't really. Uh, Pope Paul the Sixth reformed the whole thing of indulgences. You know, there used to be a time when uh, certain prayers or certain actions would gain or merit, say, so many days indulgence, say, fifty days or hundred days indulgence, and it's an impossible thing to measure. Uh, because what what precisely does it does it mean, and like how long does a soul spend in purgatory? Is it measured in terms of days? And I'm not again so sure. You see, there's no clock, there's no watch, there's no calendar <laughs> in the next life, and it certainly wouldn't be one in purgatory. It's a case of being purified of my my selfishnesses and and un, you know my my unrepented venial sin, let's say, my self love. And those mortal sins that I have confessed, but I haven't sufficiently made a reparation for them, uh, or at least made some satisfaction, let's say, for them, or some hurts I've caused to others that need to be purged, let's say. <clears throat> that You can't put really put a time on that. It's kind of like cooking. It's kind of ready when it's ready. Um, you know, you can set the timer, but you say, oh, no, I should leave it in for another bit, you know. Or maybe that's overcooked. I need to take it out. <laughs> so that kind of image comes to mind. So Pope Paul VI changed all of that. So it became a case of either plenary indulgence that you can gain on the 2nd of August um, or on such other day as designated by the local ordinary for the advantage of the faithful, i.e. the local bishop. If there is a local commemoration or feast, uh, the bishop, I think, is authorized and he can maybe set that day accordingly under the usual conditions again confession holy communion prayer for the intentions of the holy father by devoutly visiting the parish church 
and they're reciting at least the Lord's Prayer and the Creed. So there's the, the little activity. So again, we can do this from home. And uh, the, remember the, the, the indulgence of the Holy Souls the last number of years has been extended just from the first week of November to the full month of November. I don't doubt that'll be a tradition that'll be continued to encourage us to visit our cemeteries and pray for the dead. A very wholesome practice to do when you consider, when I consider, you know, I'll be buried underground for more than I'll ever have been alive. And it would be nice if someone at least could come and remember and pray and, and not be neglected and just think of all those graves in your own local cemetery that are otherwise neglected. Here's where indulgences come in. I mean, what a tremendously holy and wholesome thing to visit a grave that's utterly neglected, <coughs> to adopt it perhaps, to clean it up, and maybe go there and pray, remember that person by name. That would be a very efficacious thing to do and a very wholesome and um, sobering reminder <laughs> of our own um, our own uh, need of prayer, certainly when the time comes, but again, our own um, the shortness of our own life, you know, it's, it's, it's a, and uh, the church, you see, is encouraging that way of thinking, that way of understanding that we worry and fret about so many things. Again, few in need are needed indeed only one. So indulgences would uh, re recall that to mind uh, very closely for us and get us into the practice of regular prayer. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Regular prayer and a regular sacramental life. <clears throat> very, very important, of course, and the Church trying to encourage us on that path by the practice of, of indulgences. Not that it's a kind of way of earning our way into heaven. Christ has already earned that for us. <clears throat> but a way of putting us at rights with God and putting our faith into clear focus and, and right direction in relation to the things of, of our sacramental life and our charity towards others. So the uh, indulgence applies to the cathedral church of the diocese and to the co-cathedral church, if there is one, uh, even if they're not parochial and also to quasi-parochial churches. Seems to me like that's nearly every church, as far as we understand, we would understand that here. Uh, to gain this as uh, a plenary indulgence, as indeed <coughs> any plenary indulgence, the faithful must be free from any attachment to sin, even venial sin. That's why it's really as a counsel of perfection. Like, can anyone say, can I honestly say, I'm not attached in some way to venial sin? That's a tough call. That's a tough call. Um, because that would be as much to say that I have altogether no self-love that there's no trace of selfishness in me. <laughs> I'm not rushing forward to 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 a, be able to say that because <clears throat> I know there's <clears throat> excuse me. I know there's all kinds of self-love, uh, annoying weeds that I very much have to work on. Um, uh, you know, who, who of us can say that we're completely without attachment, even to venial sin? Where uh, this entire detachment is wanting, the indulgence will, of course, ne necessarily be partial. I suppose, do you know, really, the only real measure of complete detachment from self-love is that of martyrdom, really, the, 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 the maybe imprisonment for the faith. There could possibly be a certain amount of self-love and moaning and groaning in there too. Pity me, woe is me. Uh, <laughs> that's a tough one. Uh, tell me what you think on that one because um, my take on that is that that sounds quite almost untenable, let's say. Uh, <laughs> but at any rate, you see, we, we this is why it, it does us well or we, we do well to avail of every possible indulgence that is at the disposal of, of us through the treasury of the church, which again is why it's strongly recommended we would attend Holy Mass every day and get to regular confession, say, fortnightly, again if it's possible, and uh, do whatever the indulgence acts demands. I mean, if we're in the practice of saying the rosary every day, of 
visiting cemeteries regularly. Again, these would just be sort of natural parts of our just way of living, and we'll gain every possible indulgence without any extra effort required, you know. So thanks for that message, um, and good to just explore that topic a little bit further with you there. Uh, message here, the bold PJ rang. I met PJ yesterday. Thanks, uh, PJ, for coming along on our uh, pilgrimage, mini pilgrimage there. He said it a great day yesterday. Really enjoyed putting faces to the names and uh, to meet uh, myself and uh, Ollie Clark and uh, Dermot, of course, as well. Three of the voices, of course, that you hear on the radio as well. So thanks, PJ. And indeed, I, I learned from you that you're here in Dublin and encourage you to come on over. Pay us a visit. The kittle is on. There's an old scone there you can uh, indulge in. We'll give you that indul plenary indulgence in a scone. And uh, indeed, you might, if again, I forgot to ask you, PJ, yesterday, if you were anyway musically inclined, if you had an instrument and had uh, the confidence and the capacity to come along and give us a bit of live music even on Saturday for Keologus Crack, too. Now that's the end of our show today. Thank you for being part of Chattachesis. Lovely to have your company. The time is approaching 12 o'clock and of course time for our angels and our midday prayer. Do stay with us. Your say will follow and of course our rosary, lunchtime rosary likewise, will follow at half past 12. So lovely to have your company. We listen now to our angelus bells. <laughs> 